Hi everyone, welcome back. In the last video, I talked about getting some sort of an instance type results using uh, semantic segmentation. And in the next couple of videos, I am going to talk about making this segmentation process easy, especially in the next one, I'm gonna talk about how you can easily get uh, object segmentation, for example, without even using any deep learning, uh, just with a few lines of code. But the basis for that is formed via a good understanding of what Voronoi is. And in this short video, I am going to focus a bit on getting you guys up to speed on the topic of Voronoi. What is it and how can we use that for object segmentation, which we are going to do in the next video. So please do not forget to hit the subscribe button so you get notified whenever these type of videos get uploaded. Okay, now what is Voronoi? This is, uh, let me just read the text on the screen. Uh, it's a diagram that divides a plane into different regions. Think of different countries on a world map, okay? It's a diagram that divides your plane into various regions, and how does it do that? Well, first of all, each region contains exactly one seed in the middle. So think of uh, the country capital as a seed, and you kind of grow the seed and wherever it kind of stops, that is the region that defines the country. It's very similar. It's a diagram that divides the plane and it uh, contains exactly one seed. A country has one capital. So we're not talking about South Africa now, right? Most countries, one capital, you grow it. And every point in a given region is closer to its seed than any other. Meaning you go to any place in that region the closest point is this seed and not any other seed. This is basically a Voronoi. I'm gonna show you a visual representation of that in a minute so you get better understanding. In fact, I did that on my uh, primary page, uh, on the, on the uh, first uh, page right here, right? I mean, you have a whole bunch of seeds. Think of these as cap uh, uh, capitals of different states or different countries. And then you grow from here, wherever it stops, that is its region. So any point in this box is closest to this dot and to no other dots. That's exactly what that statement means. And the regions around the edges, they extend out to infinity. So if I go back to this diagram, you see this region right there, it extends to infinity. That bottom region, infinity, infinity right there. So there is no edge unless you define it. In our case, if you have an image, then the edge of an image is the is the bounding uh, is the boundary. Otherwise, it just extends to infinity. Okay, that's the core definition of Voronoi. So here, let's just put a whole bunch of random points right there and divide this, and this is what uh, you get. This is uh, the Voronoi regions, and each region contains exactly one generating point. You see, that region has one point. That's it. This region has one point, and. Uh, the regions around the edge, they just extend to infinity. And these are the seeds, the ones in blue that we provided. And uh, this is a Voronoi region. And each of these points, they are called Voronoi vertices, like this is a Voronoi vertex. And that's enough about terminology. Now, I was talking about the capital. So one way you can think of this is uh, if you have the state capitals here, there is Sacramento, right? So you have Austin right here. Uh, Baton Rouge. So keep these capitals and then draw this Voronoi, then this defines the state, uh, the shape of the states. So obviously the shapes are more drawn based on the political uh, rather than rather than some sort of an algorithm, but uh, I wish things were that simple. But anyway, this is a, uh, uh, this is an example application of Voronoi right there. Uh, now, a more practical example for image analysis is I have an image that looks like this and I would like to segment it. Uh, of course, this is a zoomed in area of a much larger image. I just want to use this uh, for illustration purposes. Now, if I want to segment this, the way I can leverage Voronoi is, first of all, let me go ahead and blur it because in this image, for example, there is something going on right there, something going on right there. I don't want this my, my region to be confused, so I just blur it so it looks like that. And then I look at the uh, centers of each of these or the brightest points, let's say. And then it gives me the center of each of these objects. And then I draw a Voronoi that separates each of these regions. And then I apply a threshold within each region and uh, uh, and wherever there are overlapping nuclei, I can just use watershed to separate them. This is a 
pretty easy, much faster than deep learning or any other approach. This is a very easy way of segmenting your images. And of course, it works not on uh, a lot of scenarios. Like it's not like you're trying to segment, uh, you know, uh, identify all cats in a scene. So this is not going to replace your mask or CNNs or any other object detection. But for scientific applications where you have a background, you have a foreground of objects, then this can be an amazing approach that, uh, that makes your life easy. So to understand this more and I just so you can play with this, uh, let's jump into the Python code and uh, generate a couple of Voronoi diagrams. And uh, I am going to share this uh, uh, image, uh, sorry, not image, this file with you. So don't bother writing anything down while you're watching. So first of all, let us uh, look at the Python version that I'm using. So in case you're watching this at a later date, you know exactly what I am using right now. So the Python version is 3.7.11. That's the one I'm using. And uh, to demonstrate Voronoi, let's first start uh, importing the relevant libraries, NumPy, so we can kind of generate uh, arrays. And within SciPy, there is uh, spatial. And within spatial, we're going to import uh, the methods called Voronoi and Voronoi plot 2D. And they do exactly what they, the name suggests. This is for plotting and that's for generating Voronoi. And let's also import, oh, let us run that line first. And let's also import uh, PyPlot so we can go ahead and plot for visualization purposes. First and first, let's go ahead and start by defining certain points as a NumPy array. I'm just, these are regular grid of points that you'll see in a second. So let's go ahead and plot that. And let me switch to plot. So that's just a regular grid of points. So how should this be divided? It's pretty easy, right? I mean, you just draw a line right here, draw a line right there, because that means within that box that gets developed, you have only one seed. And th this is just for easy illustration purposes. And how do you generate Voronoi using SciPy? I'm just using Voronoi and then just give what the points are data points, coordinates in this case. And that's it. It's as simple as that. And what does it do? It generates a Voronoi object, I believe. Yeah, it generates an object. And now we are going to use that object to get relevant information. What do we need? Vertices. Remember the vert vertices are these points that defines these Voronoi uh, regions. So let's go ahead and get the vertices and let us plot these vertices now. So, oh, sorry, print the vertices. So it says the first one is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Where is 0 0.5? Right there. And 0 0.5 right here. So that's one vertex. Obviously, we our regions are going to be like right there, down here. That means there is one at 0 0.5 and 0.5. And 0 0.5 and 1.5 is the next one right there. Well, let's visualize it. Let's go ahead and get Voronoi regions and if you print Voronoi regions, it's basically a uh, sublist that actually contains the coordinates of each region. So the coordinates of that region is like right there and so on. Now we can plot it by using Voronoi plot 2D. And let's go ahead and uh, show, yeah, I mean, right there. So you can see that uh, these are the uh, Voronoi vertices and the one inside, it's the bounding, this is the box right there. And the outside ones, if you remember, these extend to infinity. So there's nothing, no box right here. So that's it. So just to finish this, uh, let's add a few random points. This is a regular grid, no fun. Let's add some random points. I'm using numpy.random. Watch my video about what random is. Is it truly random? So look at my uh, videos uh, in my channel to find out exactly what random is. I'm pretty sure most of you know what it is, but so let's go ahead and use it. NumPy.random, we just generated 10 random points, E of size two, right? So basically our coordinates, and let's go ahead and get our Voronoi right there and plot the coordinates. And this is, these are the points that we just randomly generated. And let us look at our Voronoi plot. There you go, it's the lines right there and this is the region now just imagine having well actually let's go to the next step this this visualizes this makes you visualize whatever i'm about to say so how are we planning on using this for segmentation so first thing first let's uh, read an image and plot it and start discussing about how we can do things with that image so there you go 
there is that image, right? So I want to segment this. How can we do that? First of all, let's go ahead and start blurring this. And you can use many ways to blur this. And I believe I'm using scikit image library right there, dot filters. Where is it? Scikit image dot filter. Oh, sorry. I'm right here. So I'm using scikit image dot, uh, dot filters. And within the filters, I'm using Gaussian filter. And how am I using it with a sigma of five? So I'm blurring it a little bit, not too heavy, not too light. And let's go ahead and have a look, look at this blurred image. There you go. That's enough for me to find out approximately where these objects are located and how am I going to do that. Within scikit-image.feature, there is a method called peak local max. It's going to tell you where the local maximum is in each of these objects. You're learning many things in this video, not just about Voronoi. So please do subscribe. <laughs> and now let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, apply that peak local max to our blurred image. And within this peak local max, you can uh, you can define a lot of parameters. Let me just do that so you can see. One is minimum distance between these uh, these local max points, so you're not like getting too many points close by. And do you want to exclude the border, meaning like do you want to include the edge touching ones or you want to exclude it? For now, I'm uh, including them. So let's go ahead and uh, extract the coordinates. Now we need to visualize it. So let's go ahead and do the plotting. There you go. So these are our peak maximum. Now you know what I'm trying to do, right? So we are going to use these points as our seeds for Voronoi and separate this region. So there you go. And now let's go ahead and plot it. So these are, this is where we have our objects within each of these. And in fact, in here at the bottom, we are not detecting this data point right there. So we have to play with our peak local max just to get, or the blurring, the amount of uh, Gaussian that we are uh, doing for, uh, sorry, that we are applying for our smoothing. So that need, can be, actually we need to adjust that so you can get another data point in which case you will see another line like right here separating these two objects. But for now it's thinking that this entire thing is one object, which is fine. We can, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, after segmentation, we can try to apply watershed. I'm not showing any of that uh, uh, because I wanna save that for the next video. So please do not forget to stay tuned for the next one. So. See you guys next week.